Hey everyone, Chris here with another Stories in Cardboard. Today I'm going to do another episode of 5 Cool Cards to Collect. Uh, this is one of my favorite videos to do. I, I love doing these. It's, it's kind of one of my favorite themes, if you will. And just to kind of briefly talk about it, it's, it's kind of my response to people who do the videos of five cards going up in value and things like that. And I think they do that to promote the hobby and... I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I, I think it's really, though, not the best way to promote the hobby. I believe the best way to promote the hobby is to promote the love of the cards instead of the love of the value of the cards. With that said, I mean, I understand that cards have value, um, but that's not my main motivation when I collect cards. So what I like to do is I like to show cards that I think are cool to collect for various reasons. They either have a tie to history, they tell a story about the player or even about the collector, um, or they, they're just cool looking cards. It's just kind of, it gives you an insight of why I want to add this card or have added this card to my collection. So today I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show one hockey card. I'm gonna show one baseball card, which is a recent pickup that I got. And I'm gonna show three football cards. Those of you that have watched my channel for a long time know that football is my main passion. Uh, I love vintage football cards. Last video I did for this, I showed all baseball, so I'm going to get back to a little bit of what I love the most, and that's vintage football cards. But with that, uh, the first card I'm going to show and share with you is this 1970-71 OPG Ross Trophy winner card of Bobby Orr. Uh, this is a beautiful card. That green background with the way it just kind of contrasts against his jersey. It's just an amazing looking card. And of course, Orr is one of the all-time greats. And I really love the design, too, of, of this particular subset in this set. Now, they did not have these cards, the trophy cards, for the top set, but they did have them in the OPG cards that year and other years as well. But I love the design of it. It's just a great looking card of one of the all-time greats. Um, just a great design. Now the next card, this is a card that, it's a set that I've never owned a card from, and I've always wanted to pick one up. It's a baseball card, and I recently picked this up and was really excited to add this to my collection. And it is a 19, it's from the 1959 Fleer Ted Williams set. Um, I believe that, I believe there are 80 cards in that set. I could be wrong about that, but I think it's 80 cards in that set. And just some of the things I love about this card. I've wanted to pick up a card from this set for a while. I wanted it to be a card that really spoke to me and, and I decided on this one. And what I love about this card is you have a young Ted Williams. This, this was from a meeting where Ted Williams met Babe Ruth in 1943. And the occasion for him meeting Babe Ruth was there was a charity baseball game and it, it pitted the uh, service players who were serving in World War II at the time. They had an all-star team of service players and they were managed by Babe Ruth and they were actually playing an exhibition game um, in um, Boston at Fenway Park to uh, they were playing against the Boston Braves and Babe Ruth coached or managed this team and so Ted Williams met his idol for the first time and I think it's just great I mean it's and there are other pictures of, of him doing this and I just think it's fantastic I mean I, I can only imagine what it would have been like to meet Babe Ruth and so Ted Williams who I consider to be the greatest hitter of all time met his idol and what's interesting about this photo or, uh, or this depiction is the uniform that Babe Ruth is wearing is actually the uniform that he used for the movie Pride of the Yankees. And that uniform is actually currently in the Baseball Hall of Fame right now. So just a great card. I, I was really excited to add this card to my collection. Like I said, I've been looking for one of these that I thought really spoke to me. And that one definitely really spoke to me. Now I'm going to show three football cards, and the first one is a 19, from the 1935 National Chickle set. Uh, this is of Beady Feathers, and 
I'm a big fan of this set, and I think it's really underpriced, honestly, right now. I think you can still get them at a pretty good value and a deal if, if you're looking for cards from this set, considering what they are. And I just love the background of this card. It's just kind of that Art Deco style, and it's a, it's a great pose of beady feathers. Now, he played college football for the Tennessee Volunteers from 1931 to 1933, and he was a consensus All-American in 1933. Um, now, had there been a Heisman Trophy Award in 1933, he would have most likely won it, but the uh, Heisman Trophy did not become a thing until uh, 1935. So he played seven years in the NFL with the Chicago Bears, the Brooklyn Dodgers, and he played one year at the end of his career with the Green Bay Packers. During his rookie season in 1934, he rushed for over 1,000 yards and was the first player in NFL history to rush for 1,000 yards. And he, during that season, he averaged an amazing 8.44 yards per carry, which is just mind-blowing to me. But just the fact that, that he was the first person to rush for 1,000 yards in the NFL, I just think makes this a, a great card to own. Now, after his playing days, he coached college baseball and football, and he's one of 10 players who are on the um, 1930s All-Decade team that are not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, I'm not saying that he necessarily deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, but 10 players from the All-Decade team in, of the 1930s are not in the Hall of Fame. I, I personally think that's a shame. I think the NFL really has a problem with... Um, a lot of their players not being in the Hall of Fame that deserve to be. But I'm that guy. You know, I believe let more people in than fewer. Um, the next card is from the 1952 Bowman Large set. And what I love about the early Bowman sets is, one, they are a very important part of card history, in my opinion. Um, just, it, they were kind of ahead of their time and, you know, they kind of started doing cards before Tops did and, and really established multi-sports. You know, they did basketball and they did football and they did baseball and they did non-sports stuff. They, they really kind of revolutionized that. And, um, uh, J. Warren Bowman, who was the founder of that company, um, he made a lot of money <laughs> selling bubble gum and, and selling sports cards, which is really interesting before he ended up selling the company. Um, but what I like about the 1952 Bowman football set is it shows NFL coaches. So I really, I, I think those are interesting, especially some of these vintage guys. So the card I want to show today is a Buck Shaw. Now, Buck Shaw was a star lineman at Notre Dame on, New Rock, on Newt Rockne's first undefeated team at, uh, at uh, Notre Dame. That was actually the second year that Rockne was the coach at Notre Dame. In 1946, Buck Shaw became the first head coach of the San Francisco 49ers when they were in the All-American Football Conference. Now, in the four years that he coached in the AAFC, he finished second all four years in the Western Conference. Now, you might be saying, Chris, that's no big deal. Okay, he finished second, whatever. Um, but the thing is, he finished second behind the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Cleveland Browns ended up winning the AAFC championship all four years that that league existed. And, of course, had a very successful run in the NFL once they merged with the NFL. And the Browns won the championship, the NFL championship in 1950, 54, and 55. Now... When the Browns were in the AAFC, they only lost four games in those four years, and two of those were to the San Francisco 49ers. Now, so Buckshaw never won a AAFC championship, but then in 1958, he took over a dreadful Philadelphia Eagles team and kind of proceeded to turn that team around after um, trading for the Rams uh, quarterback Norm Van Brocklin to team up with a receiving core, they included players like Bobby Walston, Tommy McDonald, and Pete Retzlaff. And Retzlaff, I think, actually deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, too. He's one of those guys that I believe should be in the Hall of Fame as well. Now, um, in 1960, Shaw would lead the Eagles to an NFL championship game against Vince Lombardi and the Green Bay Packers. The Eagles won that game 17-13 to in what would be Vince Lombardi's only playoff defeat in his career. So... 
he had a really good um, winning record too. In while he coached in the professional football ranks, I think it was somewhere around six twenty, six twenty one, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so he was a very successful coach, and he really doesn't get the recognition, in my opinion, considering the historical significance for his career. Now, last player and card that I want to show is this guy. This is from the 1959 Tops set, and this is Max McGee. Again, this is another guy who probably should get some Hall of Fame consideration. In his career, he caught—he was a receiver, and he caught um, 6,346 yards. And 50, he had 50 touchdowns in his career, but he's probably best remembered for his Super Bowl I performance. Now, he was kind of winding his career down at this point, and during that season, he only caught four passes during that season, and he really did not think he was going to play in in the Super Bowl, and so he was kind of known as a partier and that kind of thing, and um, kind of broke curfew, kind of came stumbling in, in in the wee hours of the morning, and did not think he was going to play that day, and was kind of hung over even when the Super Bowl, when game time came around. And he ended up telling Boyd Dollar, or Dowler, one of his teammates, who was the starting receiver, that, you know, he hoped that Dowler didn't get hurt because he wasn't feeling very well. He was a little hungover. As fate would have it, Dowler separated his shoulder in the game. In comes Max McGee. He ends up catching seven passes for 138 yards and two touchdowns, including the first touchdown in Super Bowl history. So I think that's pretty cool. Just, again, one of those little connections that I look for when I look for cards that I like to put in my collection. That's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you um, kind of found some things that you found interesting about at least one of these cards. And until next time, we will see you later.